Welcome to the start of a new anime review series. You're probably thinking, what? Th you just started another one like a little week ago with Shaman King. This one is not a reboot. This is something, this is a series I've been, I've been looking forward to ever since it was first announced that, yeah, we're getting an anime based on this particular series. Based on manga that came out three years ago. Yeah, it's been almost three years since this manga started. And before this anime basically came out, I made sure for a fact I caught up with the mangas. I actually fell behind in the manga. Yeah, in case you're curious how much this, this manga, I'll, I'll read the title in just a minute. It's released only 132 chapters, which is not that bad. Now, what anime is this? Eden Zero! And it's another one where it's locked up with Netflix, but I watched some illegal, some other site. I'm not going to say what site it is, because I do not want the site to get shut down, because this is a very, despite the fact this is basically done via fan sub, but it looks very professional, and it keeps a lot of the wording from the manga really well. Yes. Eden Zero started three years ago. This episode is adaptation of the 81-page first ch first chapter and the first three pages of chapter number two. The first this episode starts up exactly with the manga. It has some minor visual changes here, and they cut some minor stuff out. We first see Shiki, his grandfather, the Demon King, that was the adopted grandfather, and a robot named Michael. If you're curious about Michael, this is his only appearance because. Uh, the I get after this. So they look up in the sky. They basically they're just stargazing, and they see it looks like a comet. What they, the Shiki says is a dragon, and he's actually right about that. It's an actual dragon. What he sees, uh, it's really in the episode. That this actually is a dragon. So, and then we jump ahead. What looks like about ten years later, I'd say, and then we see a ship coming down. Or just landed peacefully, and we see coming out. And if you're watching, if you're thinking like, "Oh, is this? Are these characters from Fairy Tale?" Because we see Lucy and Happy pop up. Like, wait. Now, technically, this is not Lucy. This is Rebecca. Despite the fact she's the same character as Lucy, you see the creator of Fairy Tale also did the series, H Hiro Mashima. Now, you're probably thinking, is he the only manga writer to reuse characters? character designs from a previous series he, he or she worked on for the current series. Technically, no. He is not the first person to do this. The creative mini Washa. Like, if you read if you, if you read that, watch that anime, if you watch Rima Half, a lot of the character designs from that series were used for Inuyasha. Take, for example, the second demon that Inuyasha fought in the series. She's actually based upon one of the characters from Rima Half. Now, now, Happy technically is Happy, but it isn't Happy. Now, character-wise, design-wise, this technically looks like Happy. He talks like Happy. He eats fish like Happy. Except this is not Happy. This is a complete different Happy. This one is a robot. They don't feel this is a little bit later. This is actually a robot. Also, this Happy is a lot more smarter than the one from Fairy Tail. The one from Fairy Tail is kind of an idiot. That's how the writer wrote him. Kind of an idiot. But always faithful to his best friend, Natsu. This Happy is good friends with Rebecca. They don't explain Happy's backstory until a little bit later on. Like, I'd say about a couple years. Uh, at least about... I think about like a dozen chapters of the series. It's not It's not for like a while. So they arrive there via their fish ship. Yeah, the ship is a ship like a giant fish. And they arrive at Grimble Kingdom. Now, the Grimble Kingdom is basically a kingdom that technically is revealed to be a theme park. Like, oh, like, we have our first guest in 100 years. It's probably like Shiki's been in for quite a while. Well, Demon King basically can come, come and go anytime he pleases. So, so yeah, and of course she, you probably notice, like, she has, like, a little cube around her neck. She's a B-cuber, which is a nod to YouTube. That is seriously what the thing is based upon. It is based upon YouTube. And they talk about getting a million subscribers. Which is what a lot of YouTubers basically really want to get. That is their dream. That's that's a mile that's basically a goal they want when becoming a YouTuber is get a million subscribers. There are some YouTubers who have gotten that high. 
but I think it's like one or two at most. Mostly a lot of YouTubers, basically subscribers, I've seen the highest I've seen is like over 100,000 or at least 500,000, but never a million. A million is very rare at best. So she wants a million and apparently her her cube is actually her camera. Yes. So you can do that reading is like, and they're all like sweaty, like really? <laughs> And of course, she takes the quest, which, hey, this little this little cafe looks like it's taken from the Guild Hall from Fairy Tale. Well, it's a redesign. Now, in the case of Seti redesign, I think Hishiro Rashi was the only one who's a manga who technically has done this before. Um, though that some writers like to play Easter eggs from the previous series. I think for Soul Eater, the three Easter eggs from that series are actually in Fire Force, Mailing in the Moon. But in the case of this one, now in the case you think, though, is there been any American writer, American artist who have done this? Yes, there have been. One big example of this is Steve Ditko when he reused the Sink of St. Torrent from Doctor Strange in the pages of Shade of the Changing Man. So, not an original concept of writers not only using character designs, but also set designs. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the cafe looks very similar to the original version of the Fairy Tale Guild Hall. The interior of it is, yes. So, they have a quest to go get a monster. Something directly from Fairy Tale, obviously. I think the paper is like, very similar. And they go out and they come across a giant white cat. Robot. And there is a boy. Well, at least a guy out saying on top of trying to fix it. And it then collapses. And, of course, you got long hair. It's Shiki. Yep. And if you're curious, though, what, what he does, Rebecca does do is the manga. Yes. Grabs her face, grabs her chest, like, and of course she does smack him, just like in the manga. I when I was watching this again, I was like, I went watch this today. I'm like, man, it is so hilarious seeing this humor again because I love this guy's humor. So, of course, he tries various times to make Rebecca her, her friend, his friend. Now, there's some mild changes with the introduction because they don't have like a guy basically sweeping per se. Just some guy just shows up and has the same lines of dialogue. So, then of course, Rebecca notices, and of course, he goes to sleep and he asks the robots, Can I cut Shiki's hair? And, like, sure, go right ahead. <laughs> Shiki does notice the very next day. And, of course, well, Shiki, of course, when he falls asleep, he also breaks the table. Who do you think he is? T who do you think he is? Dudley Boys with his smashed tables like that? So. She goes to sleep, and looks like, though, from the looks of it, the way she sleeps, it looks like she sleeps like. Uh, could see her bare back. I'd say you could say she sleeps topless, but not really because the very next day she wakes up and she's tied to a post, meant to be burned at the damn stake for some reason. And of course, Shiki wakes up and his hair has been cut. Oh, in case you're curious, though, Shiki technically does maintain this look for pretty much the rest of the series. Now, with the bandage look, a bandage and the way his hair is when he first showed up. You might think he looked like Agnologia. Yes, appearance-wise, with his scary demeanor, he kind of looked like Agnologia from Fairy Tale. But even though this isn't really Agnologia, for one thing, he's got a different skin color. Though I would say the only thing similar is that the, the face looks very similar, and when he's in his scary mode, and the hair. Though with the haircut, it makes it look like Natsu. Yes, it makes it look like Natsu. Well, mostly in the face, per se, we look like normal. And his hair, hair length is very similar to Natsu's. Though I have heard that Shiki himself is named after a character from Monster Hunter Orange. Which is a series, which is a manga that the writer did create, which is based upon a video game named Monster Orange. Yep, he did create the series. He didn't technically write the video game, but he did create the manga. So this is a name after a character from that. But I would say... Appearance-wise, the character is mostly just a redesign, mostly by a look at him, of Natsu. And yes, in case you're curious, though, like, is there a redesign for Urza in the series? Yes, but she doesn't appear for a little while, actually. I don't think I don't think she shows up for like chapter like ten. I don't remember what when she shows up, but she shows up some some point a little later. So, yep. So basically, the robots and the plant seeds of. Like, oh, something's going on with Lord Shovel and the fact that these robots are acting kind of suspiciously evil, like, has some bad intentions. And they say to Shiki, oh yeah, our friendship, he was nothing more than a big fat lie. 
Yep, and then he pretty much gets beaten up by his friends. And then, because, well, because Rebecca was crying. Now, we actually do see, like, something they actually did kind of, they have sort of a big glare, and then they show what happened. Basically, he forms his internal, his ether gear, which basically forms, like, the back of his hand, like, dot, dot, dot for his knuckles, and basically, like, this bone truck, like, little lines here across his arm. Yeah, it's a very cool visual. And I appreciate it, though, that the anime who made the studio made it, I think it's J.C. Staff, J.C. Staff that made this one. Where they actually show the transformation, and he proceeds to beat up the, the, the Lord Sessio, who basically is the uh, battle bot. Yes, he's a battle bot. He fights him, defeats him, and then take and then basically frees, and of course, happy frees Rebecca. Of course, he uses his particular power from Dark Ages. Interesting. And then they proceed to, oh yeah, you got a ship? Yeah, it's over that way. I'm like, couldn't you at least grab her clothes up from her from her room? Nope, I guess there wasn't any time. So they get her ship, and of course ship flies. Yes, yeah, ship flies. He doesn't know if it flies, and he goes straight to space. And it's also revealed, like, what, when they go into space, that the robots are actually playing being bad. The reason? Because they're all dying. Yes, they're all about to cease to function, and then they all just collapse and all die. And that's the last scene of these robots. With the exception of Demon King himself, these these particular robots do not appear again at all in the series because they all seek to function. So, and it turns out that the island that Shika was on was actually on a planet that was Planet Gerbil, who was a, who was a planet that's the theme park. And then they fly through, and of course he's based the first time. Which is an absolutely great moment, and basically, well, he's happy to get a chance to go to space for, with Rebecca. And then, of course, he wants at one point he wants to break the glass to say, to see if he can hear him. Like, no, don't do that. Good idea, don't break the glass. And then we have a cutaway to the dragon. Yes, the comet is actually a dragon. And look inside this much where it flies by this bigger structure, this person known as Mother. Now, this particular last like one minute sequence is taken from the first three pages of chapter two. Yep. I gotta say, great episode. And I love the whole sci-fi nature for this. Now, they technically don't have an opening title sequence per se. They have the issue of the title, briefly. They might show the old title sequence in the very next episode. They might do that. It's possible. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do for it. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I should also point out, though, the next chap next episode... Excuse me. The name itself comes from... The second chapter series. Yep. Yes, it does. Mm hmm. Yep, and from this point forward, I will be reviewing this series. Now, I initially heard about this series from my friend Edgar. This was back in 20. I think it was like 2017 when, when this. I think. Let's see. How long ago was the first chapter released? Because they released this, this series just not long after. It was in... Yeah, 2018 when the thing started. Yep. Oh, yeah, also... They view Rebecca as from a place called the Blue Garden. Yep. Which is a planet. Yes, it's a planet. Yep. Now, I'm definitely looking forward to reviewing the rest of the series. Now, they did confirm this series to be, well, probably for just for the season anyways, because I'm sure that the season will be popular in Japan. So we might get season two out of this. They confirmed the season to be 24 episodes. That's not a bad first start for, for a first season. I, mean, I like that count a lot better for, for a, a season than, let's say, 12 or 13. 24 is fine. I got no problem. As long as from 22 to 26, it's perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, the first season, the current season of My Hero Academia is probably going to be 26 episodes again. I'd be surprised with that. Yep. So yeah, that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned for my next review, which will be One Piece and then Barto, and that'll probably be it for today. Okay? Next video. Bye.